rotations, everybody's favorite. Not true. It's not everybody's favorite. This is where you really have to rely on, like, visually, where do you think something would be, and then commit to that and, and try to make sure it ends up in that location. Okay? So a rotation turns a figure around a fixed point called the center of rotation. For our examples, the center of rotation will be the origin and will rotate in increments of 90 degrees. So you guys remember when we did that activity where you were trying to get something to then be to cover another object? It was like a little L shape. We were trying to get it to cover, right? And some of you were doing rotations that weren't in increments of 90, so then it was like you had to start all over, right? So we're going to be doing increments of 90 degrees for each of these, okay? So if you look here, we have clockwise, right? Because it goes in the direction that a clock would go. And then we have counterclockwise, okay? So we have clockwise and counterclockwise, right? And each quadrant that we move is worth 90 degrees. So if I move from here to here, I went 90 degrees. If I move from here to here, I went 180 degrees. If I move from here all the way around here, I went 270 degrees. And that's what we're going to be talking about very specifically, those, those 90, 180, or 270 degree rotations. So let's look here at number one. I have A and A prime. I went clockwise one quadrant. So how many degrees did I go? 90. But I went counterclockwise three quadrants. So how many degrees did I go counterclockwise? 270. Right? So if I go this way, it's 90. That's clockwise. But if I go this way, all the way around here, I moved one, two, three quadrants. So that's going to be 270. But you don't move four. If I moved four, I'd be right back where I started. So I start here, so I went one, two, stopped on the third quadrant. Great question. So how about for number two? Now, this is where it really becomes important you pay attention to if there's a prime or not, right? So I'm starting down here, and I'm going clockwise three quadrants. So how many degrees did I go clockwise? 270. And then how many did I go counterclockwise? 90. How about for C and C prime? How many clockwise? 180. And how many counterclockwise? Also 180. Jackson, you getting all this written down? Okay. Go ahead and do D, E, and F by yourself. Go ahead and work on those independently.
did there? Yeah? Okay. All right, let's move on now to this number seven. We have triangle ABC, right? You always go in alphabetical order when you're naming shapes, right? And we're going to rotate it all of these different um, degrees. Okay, I'm going to give you guys the algebraic representation because in my person, like my brain, it's easier if I know where to go, where to put the values and to make them opposite or the same, as opposed to trying to figure out exactly where they go on the coordinate plane and just kind of visually doing it. I need like a rule, right? So these are the rules that you would do to get a 90, 180, or 270 clockwise rotation. Okay, so let's look at this first one. They tell us that this is where A, B, and C is starting. Right here, we have this beautiful A, B, C. So we're going to find A prime, B prime, and C prime if we were to rotate 90 degrees. So the algebraic representation is if you start out with X, Y, your image is going to be the value that was Y will be in the x spot, and the value that was x will be the opposite, and in the y spot. Okay. So I'm going to take these numbers, and I'm going to put the y where the x was, and I'm going to put the x where the y was, and I'm going to do the opposite. So a prime would be at 1, negative 2. Do you have a question? Okay. I be switched to negative one. Because that's just that's not the algebraic representation for it. And so when I when I act, when we actually graph it, you'll be able to see better like how we got that representation. So what would B prime image value be? One negative seven, negative six. Yep. And how about C prime? Seven. Yep. So now when I graph these, right? I'm going to go over 1, down 2, over 1, down 6. Oops, I went over 2 on 
x in it. That should be 1, negative 2, 1, negative 6, and 7, negative 4. And I have a prime, b prime, c prime. Right? So if you think about it, Maggie, I just like rotated it onto its side, so now it turned 90 degrees. Right? Or it also says that could be the 270 counterclockwise. Okay. Wait, two, um, uh, Cause if I went this way, it would be, excuse me, if I went this way, it would be one, two, three. So that would be 270 counterclockwise. Clockwise is pretty easy, or 180 is pretty easy. You guys are going to like it for the 180 degree one. It's opposite X, opposite Y. So you just make, you keep them in the same location and just take the opposite numbers. So what would A prime be for 180 degree? Yep. Negative 6, negative 1, negative 4, negative 7. And then for 270 clockwise, so if we're going to go three quadrants, it's going to be facing this way. C is going to be out here because I'm rotating it this way again. The algebraic representation for this one is opposite Y, X. So, Zoe, what would A prime be for that one? Uh, negative 1, 2. Yep, exactly. Negative 1, 2. I took the opposite of the Y, and then I put the X just as it was. How about B prime? Go ahead. Yeah. Perfect. And finish up with C prime. Great. Kind of looks like a windmill or like a pinwheel. Do you guys ever do those when you're little? Like you put them in your yard and the wind makes it go. You know what I'm talking about? Can we go? Sure. OK, I'm going to show you guys something that I think for some of you, it'll be like, oh my gosh, that clicks. For some of you, you're going to be like, I don't know why she just showed me that. But it's, it's worth it to me to show you for a few of you that this will click for. OK, so if you remember, we are moving in increments of 90 degrees, right? Each quadrant is worth 90 degrees. Everybody with me? Okay, so if I connect any pre-image point through the origin to an image point, it should be the increment that I rotated it. Right? So just wait for it. If I connect A to the origin, and then I connect it to the A prime of my new image, it should be... What, what is what is this shape here? What is this L? 90 degrees. What? Right? And that was a 90 degree rotation. So if I connected this A to this A prime, you guys can't see that. Hold on. If I connected this A 
to this A prime, it's going to be a straight line. What's the, what's the measurement of a straight line? See what I did there? Right? If I connect this to this one, it would be a 270. It would go all the way around the outside. Right? If I did C down through the origin to C prime, what am I going to get as my increment, my, my measurement? 90 degrees. What if I did B to B prime? 90 degrees, right? So some people, it helps if you're like, oh, if I visualize, what could I connect that to to make a 90 degree angle or 180 degree angle, then I can easily plot my points visually as opposed to using the algebraic representation. Yay, math. Yay, math. Okay, I want you guys to do 8, 9, and 10 and tell me what rotation happened. So if I go from this to this, did I do 90, 180, or 270 for each rotation clockwise? What? Okay, so if I start out at x at 9, 8, and I end at x prime, which is 8, negative 9, what does that match up with? Which algebraic representation? 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 for the rotation? Like what happened? to get from here to here. Well, it's y opposite x is what happened. Y opposite, so it's 90 degrees clockwise. And it's also 270 degrees counterclockwise, right? So this one is Opposite y, x. So what's that going to be? Opposite y, x. 270. 270 clockwise. And 90 degrees counterclockwise. Everybody should get number 10. Super easy. Opposite, opposite. 180. Everybody loves rotations. You can sing about it. Come on, Noah. No. Not today? Maybe tomorrow? Probably not tomorrow. Okay. All right. You guys are going to do the first six on this. So just draw a little squiggle so you know to stop at six. You're going to figure out what the ordered pair would be if you rotate these letters a certain amount. So let's remind ourselves of the rules here. So 90 degrees clockwise is This is also 270 counterclockwise. 180 degrees is xy turns into opposite x, opposite y. You're just going to do the first six there. Figure out what the new ordered pair would be for those first six. You don't have to draw them on the, on the plane or anything. Just tell me what they would be. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to set up the first one just so you can see.
Yep. You're welcome. You're right, Carmen. <laughs> what was that song? Sounded sounded terrible. <laughs> terrible. Okay, <laughs> let's check our work here. Remember, you were only doing the first six. We're not. Well, if you didn't put the original down, that's fine. I just did it so that I could then use this to help me figure out easily what the image value would be. Number four, one, negative um, Because 90 degrees clockwise is you put the y here, and then the opposite of x goes here. Did I not have the right value? No, that's, yeah, 2, 1, 1, negative 2. Okay, um, go ahead and turn to the next page. We're going to try to fill out this table really quick here about scale factors and dilations. Okay, this super realistic story tells us that these people are drinking potions and it's either going to make them increase in size or decrease in size. Okay, yeah, sure, like Alice in Wonderland. So they show us the first one. If somebody starts out at 60 inches and the potion scale factor is one half, you multiply times the scale factor. New height is 30 inches. Obviously that person shrunk because it decreased in size. So if I multiply 64 times three, I'm gonna get 192 inches. Did that person grow in size or shrink in size? They were growing. Drastically. If I do 56 times 1 eighth, how do I take 1 eighth of 56? Divide. Divide by 8. So how tall am I going to be? Tiny little 7 inches. So that means that I am smaller. That potion would make me shrink. If I start out 58 inches and I my scale factor is 2.5, I'm now going to be 145 inches tall. Clearly, that potion was going to make me grow. All right, so I'm multiplying my original height times the scale factor to find my new height. 
If I'm 60 inches tall and the scale factor is 0 0.4, I'm now going to be 24 inches. So that's going to cause me to shrink. And if I am 62 inches tall and my scale factor is 3 over 2, that's like saying 62 times 1 and a half, I'm now going to be 93 inches tall, in which case that's going to make me grow. So tomorrow we'll talk about what these numbers actually mean for rules of scale factors. Scale factors.